Hi everybody, welcome back to Puggo News Around the World here and today we're going to take a look at the history of Sydney Segerold. If you grew up in the 90s you would probably know of Sonic the Hedgehog, the fast blue cool hedgehog that is trying to save his planet from the evil Dr. Robotnik. Sega World Sydney was an indoor high-tech amusement park that operated for almost four years in Sydney. The theme park was built as the flagship tenant of the Darling Watt Complex in Darling Harbor and was designed and themed by gaming company Sega as one of several Sega World branded amusement parks. Jack Fun, in collaboration with Sega and the Darling Harbor Authority, acquired land for the park in 1994 and invested an estimate $80 million to build Sega World Sydney, which opened in March 1997. Sega World Sydney utilized the latest in multimedia entertainment and designation attraction events it was described as Australia's interactive Disneyland by the media. Many of the themes were based on various Sega franchises primarily Sonic the Hedgehog. The park was also host to underage dance parties called Crush usually held during school holidays. The remainder of the complex was sublet to a mix of retail and entertainment tenants, including the Dantry Cafe and the One World Sports Restaurant and Bar. Due to a below expected attendance and constant financial losses, the park was closed in November 2000, hopes that the influx a tourist traveling to Sydney for the 2000 Summer Olympics would help the park meet its 800,000 visitor break-even point. When unrealized, Sega had sold its stake in the park to Jack Fun in 1999 for $36 million. In March 2001, the contents of the park were auctioned off. Only 300 people attended the auction, with most of the rides sold off for minimal prices. The two major rides of the park, Real Chase and Ghost Hunters, were sold to fortune buyers, with one of the rides going for 60000 less than its intended sell price of 200,000. Some of the amusement park's interior fixtures were still in place as of 2008 covered by backdrops and boarding. Rail Chase, an indoor mine train roller coaster built by Masigo Industrial with elaborate scenery and theming. After the closure of Sega World, the ride was sold to Holland, where it remains in operation. Mad Bazooka, a tank simulator built by R&T Fabrications with modified bumper cars equipped with a ball cannon. Balls were collected from the floor of the arena by running over them and then could be fired at targets mounted to the roofs of the car. The ride was removed in 1999 to make way for a proposed ice rink. Ghost Hunters, an interactive ghost train with the rides provided with laser cannons to shoot, to shoot targets. C. Shooting Dark Ride was also sold to Holland. Magic Motion 4D, a 4D cinema. Nickelodeon TV Machine, a children's play area themed on the TV channel. 
Nickelodeon, which included activities based on the famous green slime and featured a climbing jungle, ball pits, and a spiral side. Rocco was a prominent character in the area due to the park being located in Australia. Aquanova, a 3D motion simulator themed around a submarine on an underwater mission. AS-1, a motion simulator ride depicting the futuristic chase of a criminal. The ride starred Michael Jackson as a spacecraft captain. As well as the rides, the park included a fast food outlet and an extensive coin-op video arcade featuring over 100 arcade games. All games in this area were set to free play at a point in early 2000 prior to the closure. Sonic Live in Sydney, a one half hour live show hosted at the park. Sonic Life in Sydney was set in an alternate timeline based around the Saturday morning Sonic the Hedgehog animated series and served as a between story for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog 3. During the show, Dr. Robotnik's Deaf Egg Crash lands in Australia instead of Angel Island and he attempts a hostile takeover of Sydney, which is foiled by Sonic, Tails, and Princess Sally Acorn. The show featured a large amount of audience interaction. Most of the music as well as sound effects for the show was taken from Masutu Nukura's score on Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with three musical numbers. What Are We Waiting For? sung by Sonic. Give Me Chaos, sung by Dr. Robotnik, and Thank You for Being You, sung by Sally. A studio-recorded version of the performance was released on CD at the park in 1998. One year after Sydney was first performed, the show was shut down due to a lack of interest from Sega. It was quickly replaced with a puppetry-based remake that began performing from 1998 until the park closure in 2000. Aside from a few still images taken by the show staff, no footage of this incarnation has surfaced. These two performances are notable for having two of the only Time Sonic had a female voice. After another notable example being Sonic Schoolhouse, this was also the first time Tails had a female English voice actor, which would become common practice starting with Shadow the Hedgehog. As of 2022, no video of either version of a show has surfaced and only the audio for the first incarnation is known to exist. Shortly after Sega World closed with two other major tenants of the Darling Walk Complex, mm -hmm. the Dantry Cafe and the One World Sports Restaurant and Bar also closed. Jack Fun planned to install an entertainment complex to replace Sega World as the restrictions of the entertainment use. Zooning prevented Jack Fun from exploring other options, such as replacing the building with offices in March 2003. Unable to find a new flagship tenant and losing money, Jack Fun sold the lease for the Darling Walk site back to Sydney Harbor Forcer Authority for a $10 million with the lease set to expire in June 2008. Around May 2006, the only tenant was a McDonald's restaurant. Although the former Sega World site saw use as a furniture exhibition warehouse from June 2006 to June 2007, the former One World Sports area was used as the house for MTV reality television series The Real World Sydney. 
in 2008, the SHFA lease for Darling Walk side to land lease for a $560 million, which planned to demolish the building and erect two 90-story office blocks for the Commonwealth Bank. This development was permitted by the changing of the zoning affecting the site which had occurred shortly before the lease singing. The old building demolished during October and November 2008. In March 2009, Jack Fund integrated a legal action in the new South Wales Supreme Court against the Sydney Harbour Forshire Authority for depictive conduct and claiming a share of the redevelopment's profits. A clause in the 2003 sale of Jack Fund's lease back to the SHFA stated that if the Darling Walk site was resold within five years for more than a $40 million, a share of a profit would be forwarded to Jack Fund for rezoning of a site which made the subsequent resale fe feasible occurred just after the five-year period expired. And Jack Fund was illegally that this had been planned prior to their lease ending. On 25th July 2012, the New South Wales Court of Appeal ordered the Sydney Harbour Foreshare Authority to pay $1.2 million for the loss of its Jack Fund's opportunity to negotiate a higher price for the surrender of the lease. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and please let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future because I'll definitely do it because it interests me and it seems like really really fun and I enjoy doing these type of things for you guys and I will see you guys next time on Pogo News Around the World. Bye.